In this problem, we've been asked to complete and balance this reaction using the half reaction approach. As I talked about in the video, uh, there are two different ways you do this, depending on the conditions. One is for acidic conditions, and the other is for basic conditions. Here for this reaction, it lays it all out and it tells us specifically that it is, that it is done in acidic conditions. So that's the approach we're going to do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and remind you of the steps that we do for uh, doing this under acidic conditions. Step one is that we divide the original redox reaction into two half reactions, one for oxidation and the other for reduction. This is not as difficult as you think. I'm going to go ahead and write down oxidation and then I'll write reduction. And then we'll take a look at this. Uh, it might not be super obvious what's going on, but if you look at chlorine right here, that's chlorine with a negative one charge, that's a negative one oxidation number. Chlorine all by itself will bring her no charge, zero oxidation number. Uh, in order to become more, or to go from negative one to zero, it has to lose electrons because it's becoming more positive, which means that chlorine is being oxidized. So the oxidation step is Cl minus going to Cl2, and that's all you need to write at this point. By default, then, the reduction, which might be a little bit harder to pick out, is this uh, right there. So that is step one. In step two of this process, it says, balance each half reaction by doing the following in this order. First, balance elements other than hydrogen and oxygen. Let's turn back then to each of these half reactions. So I'm going to balance all of the elements that aren't hydrogen or oxygen first. Chlorine to Cl2, that's super easy. I just put a two right there. That's now balanced. Over here, I'm going to try and balance this out by, well, I've got two chromiums on the left. I'm going to go ahead and put two chromiums on the right. So now I've balanced all the elements that are not hydrogen or oxygen. Now we go to the next step. The next step says that we balance out oxygen atoms by adding H2O where needed. Let's go back here then. I don't have any oxygen atoms in this first half reaction, but in the second one, I obviously do. So I'm going to have to write down some H2Os, and they're going to have to go on the right side of the equation to balance out the oxygens on the left. So I'll go ahead and write down H2O's. Now you'll note that I've got seven oxygens on the left. In order to have that balance out, I'm going to have to put a seven right there. So I've now balanced out my oxygens. So I'm done with that step. The next step says, balance hydrogen atoms by adding H plus where needed. Going back to this thing, you'll note that as we've just thrown down an H2O, I now have 14 hydrogen atoms in here that I didn't have before. How do I fix that? I'm going to have to add some H pluses to the left. So I'll go ahead and move my uh, word reduction here. <clears throat> I mean, I'm specifically going to, have to, going to have to add 14 H pluses to the left side to make sure that my H's all balance out. Now I'm done with that step. Let's take a look at the next one. The next one says, balance charge by adding electrons where needed. Mm. Let's take a look back here. You'll notice, uh, looking at the top one, I've got... Uh, an overall charge on the left side of negative 2. Hopefully you can see that because I've got a negative charge here and there's 2 in front of that, so I've got a negative 2 overall charge. How do I balance that out? Well, I can do that by adding 2 electrons to the right side of the equation. All right? Now let's take a look at the overall charge here down uh, on the second reaction. This is a little bit more complicated. I've got H pluses. Each one has a plus 1 charge and there are 14 of them. So I've got 14, or positive 14 so far, and I've got a negative 2 overall charge here, so I'm going to add a negative 2 here. So my overall charge on the left side of the equation right now is positive 12. Looking at the right side of the equation, I've got an ion here that is 3 plus, and there are two of them, so that is a plus 6 charge, and I've got a 0 charge on the water, so I've got plus 6 on the right side of the equation. So to balance this thing out, I'm going to have to knock this plus 12 down by some amount. And it's going to, I guess it's going to have to be by 6 to make sure that everything balances out. So I'm going to have to add 6 electrons here to the left side of the equation. So now I have to shrink the word reduction here even more. So I've got 6 electrons on the left side of the equation. So that adds a negative 6 here to the left. So negative 6 plus 14 minus 2 leaves me behind with plus 6 on the left side. And now the charges left to right are totally balanced. Now I'm done with that step. Let's take a look at the next step in this lineup. The next one says, multiply your half reactions by adding integers as needed to make the number of electrons lost in the oxidation be equal to the number of electrons gained 
and the reduction. Looking at these, you'll notice that I've got two electrons up top and I've got six electrons down bottom. That doesn't match, so I have to multiply my oxidation uh, reaction by whatever number is necessary in order to get the two here and the six here to be the same. If I multiply everything by three up top, this two becomes a six, this uh, becomes a three, and this also becomes a six. Now I've got the same number of electrons on the right side of the oxidation equation as I have on the left side of the reduction equation, and I'm done with that step. Let's take a look at the next step. The next step says, add the half reactions together. Where possible, cancel out species that are the same on both sides of the final equation. So let's go ahead and go back here. I'm going to take these two half reactions that are now finished and ready to be added together, and I'm going to add them all together, putting everything that's on the left side of both equations together on one grand left side, everything that's on the right sides of both equations in one grand right side. Anything that's the same on both sides gets canceled out. Now before even adding things together, I can, right out of the gate, cancel out the six electrons, because you'll notice the six electrons here are on the right side of the equation, six electrons over here on the left side of the equation. They'll totally get canceled out. Now when I'm all done, you'll see that I've got six chlorides on my left here, plus 14H pluses, plus chromate, Cr207, two minus, yielding, now I put down my right sides, I've got three Cl2s plus two Cr3 pluses, plus seven H2Os. I've now successfully added these two equations up, canceling out the necessary species. Let's take a look at our final step. The final step of this process says, make sure that the atoms and charges are all balanced in your final balanced equation. So let's take a look at this and make sure that's true. I've got six chlorines on the left. I've got three times two is six chlorines on the right. I have 14 hydrogens on the left. I have seven times two is 14 hydrogens on the right. I have two chromiums on the left. I've got two chromiums on the right. I have seven oxygens on the left. I've got seven times one is seven oxygens on the right. Now let's check the charges. I've got six minuses, so that's a minus six. I've got 14 pluses, that's a plus 14. And I've got two minuses right there. That gives me an overall charge when I add these all together of positive six. Now on the right side of the equation, I've got a plus three multiplied by two, so I've got two times a, well, two times a plus three is also a plus six. So my overall charges match, and all of my uh, elements are bounced left to right. So this overall equation right here is now the final balanced equation and is the correct answer to this question.